What do you think of my new studio? It's been a long time coming. Back into my temporary studio. Hi, how you going? It is a little noisy because there's no soundproofing. We'll just have to put up with it for now. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on quick, easy, non-fuss editing in Photoshop. It was raining outside and I wanted something to do. So I threw one together and at the end of it, I asked the question, how did I go? So if I'm on the right track, give me the thumbs up or leave a comment. Had some requests as well for me to do some more. So I thought, probably do what I, those requests. But then I thought, hang on a minute, let's go back a step. We need a good computer to be able to do these things in Premiere Pro with film editing and Photoshop. I know when I first started out, I had a very low-end computer. It was a gaming computer, and I actually thought that's what would be really good for media. Because going on the internet, there was just no information there to tell you what you need to be able to use media, digital media, flawlessly without any hassles, without it freezing, dropping out. That computer I had was terribly frustrating. As I got better and better in Photoshop, I did more and more technical stuff, taxing the computer terribly, and it just freeze. And yeah, frustrating, so frustrating. So I went on a journey on the YouTube and other parts of the internet, looking desperately for the answers. Even my local PC guy had no idea what you needed for media. And after a couple of years of searching, finally someone, well a guy in America, a professional film editor, did a, a home build. So he built himself a very high-end computer and he did it in detail, which, <laughs> wow, I enjoyed it so much. It was exactly what I needed. He told you how much he was paying for everything and all the benchmarks and the, the reasons why he was buying these particular items. Also looking at future proofing as best as possible. So being able to expand later on if you need to. So, you know, the size of your case, a big enough case for it, be able to put more stuff in if you need as technology gets better. Or the rest of it, being able to add more stuff onto it as well for them to have a higher performance. So I studied it, I watched it, I got game and I decided to build my own, following exactly what he bought I'm very good with my hands, so that was what uh, pushed me over the line in the end to really do it. Because this computer cost me 2500 and I saved 600 because I'm a bargains man. I made sure everything I bought in here was always on special. Listening to him, finally got to understand how a computer works. Not the programs, I still have trouble with programs, too many files and stuff everywhere, all this jargon stuff, I still have trouble there. But physically being able to put things together, I am really good at. So I built this, and um, yeah, let's stop waffling on and talk about what you need for media to be able to work flawlessly without crashing or any mucking around. And also, how have I gone with future-proofing this? All right, so let's get this nice glass cover off. Now I chose this one over a standard panel without glass in it, because it's nice to look inside, you know. But anyway, let's get it off and look inside. Now this is a fractal Arctic white case large case so that we can expand if we need to. There's nice soundproofing in it and it's pretty quiet and the fans that come with it are 
pretty quiet too, it's set for now. We, I built this six years ago. So the fans are getting a little old in the tooth and a little bit noisier. So my ex intake fan there will have to go and the same with my exhaust fan pulling out. I've put two new Be Quiet fans for my cooling system and they are so quiet, they're beautiful. So yeah, I'll be getting two more of them for that. Right, so the case is really expandable. The motherboard that's in there now is quite high end but you could actually get a much bigger, larger sized one for more graphics cards and everything else. But future proofed, I have done so nicely. Well, the guy that I watched in America helped me out with that, that's for sure. So I took his advice and bought everything that uh, he talked about. Plenty of space still for more hard drives. Moving on to our motherboard which is extremely important. If you're going to do high-end stuff, you need the motherboard to be able to adapt to that, be able to take in high-end chips, memory, and graphics cards. So it has eight spots for eight cards of memory. So it's highly upgradable. I have 32 gigs of RAM, so RAM memory, expandable to 64. That's as much as I can do on this motherboard, which is enormous. When you consider that a home computer, four to eight gig, but for media, for doing Premiere Pro, especially in full HD, you need at least 32 gigs of RAM. That's what I have still, even with Ultra HD, that has proved to be fairly well future-proofed because it seems to cope well. We'll stop right there and we'll talk about the chip first. Now that's an i7. Now I, as you already know, you get i3, i5, which are the more lower end chips, but you can get different versions of them, one that's a bit more powerful. So low end and then up to the high end. The same with i7s. There's a baseline. And then we so move into the more mid, the more pro range. Then we go into the extreme, which is what this one is. So it's quite a high end chip. The one above it, the price jump was huge. It was $1,200. The time I bought that, this one was around eight hundred dollars, and sometimes you could get it under seven hundred, which is what I got. I had a hundred dollar savings off what the original price was. That was my biggest bargain buying this computer, and that came from America before we had all these taxes, these import taxes and stuff. So I built this at the right time. Right, so we have this high-end chip that can take all this information and process it without any problems, flawlessly. And it's proven to be that way. When I'm working with Ultra HD, it usually runs around 48% to 50% working in Premiere Pro. So it's really getting pushed but it's only using half its uh, ability. Now with our RAM cards, that's one of the major things that'll stuff up with uh, the workflow of working with Adobe products or any other type of media need a huge amount of memory from to work flawlessly because what memory does is I'm not a technical person so I'll just tell you what I've learned and make it as simple as I can when you open a program the information has to go somewhere temporary so that's what our memory cards are doing they're gathering the information and then 
throwing it flawlessly into our processing chip, our CPU. And if you don't have enough, it's going to be slow, it's going to hold things up, and you'll start getting freezing, and crashing of the computer like I had with my cheap end one. So having lots of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM still works really well with Ultra HD. Moving on to the next important thing is the graphics card. But it's not so important for playing Ultra HD or Full HD because this is a 4 gig card and I only use 10%. It goes up to 30% when I'm rendering a program in Premiere Pro. But if I'm just building a program, it usually only runs at about 10 to 12% of its capacity. And so it's hard to get used. So 4 gig card has proven to be future-proofed and working really well. It may wear out at any minute, but touch wood, it keeps going for a couple of more years, yeah. And that is a GTX 670. At the time, this card was highly recommended by a lot of people. And my American friend did bench testings with you know, eight gig cards and just found that it was overkill. And it's proven to be that, that's for sure. That's been a great card. Now, with Premiere Pro and Photoshop and all other Adobe products, you need, they talk in CUDA cores. Now, I don't know what CUDA cores really are, but I know for performance wise, for Premiere Pro to work, you need a lot of CUDA cores. And when you look at each individual program on Adobe site, they tell you how much CUDA cores are needed to run that program. This had a lot more than, than uh, Premiere Pro actually needed. So yeah, it, it's proven to be really good and it works well. Now Premiere Pro and all the other Adobe products come with their own CUDA cores, but to get uh, a better benefit, I mean, we've put this high-end card in there, so we might as well as use it. And you can do that in the uh, profile setup. We go in there and we can actually choose it. All right, moving on. We need something to power all this. And I have a Corsair 750 watt powering up all this system. A lot of people I've seen online, even recent times, they say you need a thousand watts. But it depends on what you're putting in. If you're putting tons of stuff in there, tons of fans, well, maybe you might. But for this build, four fans, four hard drives, and there goes my picture that I took in Tassie. <laughs> it's going to fall off, so I'll just take it off. Yeah, that's um, come up beautiful. I love that one. Yeah, it, it looks very arty, lots of texture in there. Moving back to our power supply. So that's done well, future proof, that's for sure. And we'll move on to what we need for our programs. SSDs are the way to go. I've had, you know, my other computers I've had in the past, very slow opening programs. When you use an SSD, they just open like that. It's amazing how quick they open. And of course, you know, we have these beautiful memory cards that can take a lot of information quickly and feed it over to our chip. We need something at the other end to be able to give it to it at a fast pace as well. It's extremely important to have them for our programs. So Windows, all your other programs, you can put them on. And by the way, this computer is only, strictly only for media. I don't put anything else on it. I don't want hassles with, especially with pirated stuff off websites. Um, I want this computer to work flawlessly no hassles, and that's why it's lasted six years. It's still going good today. So it's really worthwhile having a computer just for media. All right, so to store all my files, my, uh, sorry, my photographs and my footage, because they're so cheap, I've got them on hard drives. 
when I look on the performance of them, they're the bottleneck, so they do slow things up a little bit, but you know, what can you do? Two terabytes each of those are. The storage space, and actually both of them are filled up. Uh, for to buy an SSD, ah, too expensive still. So at the minute, that and I use portable hard drives as well. All right, so now we know what we need to power all our programs so that they run flawlessly. A high-end motherboard that's expandable if we need to. A very high-end CPU chip, or i7. Memory, extremely important for media is lots of memory. A good graphics card, power to go with it, SSDs for our programs. And also, one more item to keep that chip cool and running at its top efficiency. We need a good cooling system and I've got a Corsair sealed unit so it's liquid cooled. I'll put the computer back together. We'll jump into Premiere Pro and we'll have a look at the performance of this computer when we're playing back Ultra HD with 50 frames per second. And we'll have, I'll show you how to open up in Taskmaster, bring up our uh, screen to show the performance levels of everything in here. We're in Premiere Pro and I have some footage I took of the Agile Intercons, that little marsupial I like to film in Ultra HD 50 frames per second which is going to test out any computer there's a lot of information there now I do get a little bit of freezing in Premiere Pro not all the time but it does happen uh, and for it to play properly I'll have to render it and that's a pain you want to do that at the end not continuously to see whether what you've done uh, looks all right it just takes up your time so anyway we'll have a look at why it's doing this for seeing who's the culprit is it the graphics card or is it the memory or is it the chip itself all right we're going we're going to hold down Control and Alt and then pressing the delete key brings up our task master. We'll open that up and go to performance. There is all our components, CPU, our i7 chip, our memory cards and our hard drives. And right down the bottom we get our graphics card down here, GPU. Right, so at the minute, yeah, chip's just uh, running at 1%, it's not really doing much, a couple of little spikes there, but uh, opening up that project, you can see memories working a little bit here, 16%. Down the bottom, our graphics card is 1%. So let's have a get it playing. I'll bring up our chart again and we'll see how things run. So our graphics card starting at 25%. I'm not getting any problems with my footage at the minute. It seems to be running all right. We'll come back to that graphics card because I'm sure it's going to drop right down. All right, now our memory is skyrocketing. It's up to 68%, 70%. Heading up towards 80%. So this is the culprit. For 50 frames per second, I need to have more RAM if I want it to work flawlessly. Now we're starting to freeze up. I'm starting to have some problems. So I think that it is the graphics card. And now the gra I mean the memory. It's dropping off now that it's all freezing. It's uh, yeah, dropping down to 37%. So 
So I think that that's the problem. I'm not 100% sure. You can also see what it's pulling off our, one of our hard drives there, which is my little portable one. It's running quite high to 70% and peaking right up. So I'm not sure, but it's something to work on, investigate more, but it seems that I might have to have some more RAM, which I can do. I can expand right up to 64 gig. So there you go. That's uh, 50 frames per second, Ultra HD working in Premiere Pro. I'm going to quickly render this, so we'll be back in a second. All right, so we're all rendered up. Let's uh, hit uh, play and see what happens. And it's running how it should do and I'll bring out my diagnostic sheet here and we'll have a look so now that it's all rendered up my my CPU my i7 chip is working quite well it's quite happy tugging along there at 10 12 percent it will go up a little bit more because I know from testing before that it gets up to about 20 odd percent but it's doing all right at the minute. Uh, my memory is running up again. It's going up to uh, 39%. And that'll hover around that as well when it's rendered. And have a look at that. My graphics card, 12% to 10%. So it's a averaging around 10%. And we're not crashing and we're going all right. So sort of future-proofed as best as possible and it's doing all right 4k it's not too much issues but what I was doing I was filming everything in 50 frames per second with wildlife but I've changed my thinking now that uh, I'm, I'm over it's a bit of overkill sometimes so the bigger the animal back down to 25 frames per second is perfect and I don't have any issues in Premiere Pro but for this little guy my little agile antichinus, little carnivorous marsupial. They move at such a pace as you can see as it moves around. I need to film it in 50 frames per second to make it look a bit smoother. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, looking at what you need in a PC to be able to work flawlessly with any type of media. Beautiful, finally to have my own studio. As you can hear, it's very echoey, so it needs a lot of work. Repainting, soundproofing, all sorts of things. And a sound booth so I can do voiceovers. Yes, finally, I'll get my own space. That's enough for me today. If you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. If you'd like to go and have a look at my channel, click on the icon down below. There's over 50 videos to choose from. I've done it all talking about birds in flight so all talk types of photography stuff and talking about video as well filming wildlife all sorts of things so go and have a browse there must be something there of interest to you now just remember if you don't do you don't get so get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife see ya